can, can imagine Merrick, okay? He, he's a building. He's a tower. He just sits there. Ooh, what are you going to do? <laughs> Scratch me? <laughs> and then all he does is, when he sees a goddamn aircraft comes by, you mean, you mean, it's exactly, it's shah. Shah. And then they die. Brain damage. Alright guys, I think it's time. Well, here we go. So, special guest, you want to say hi for everybody? Hello everyone. Who are we talking to right now? <laughs> Is, am I talking to am I talking to Selena right here? I think I'm talking to Selena. How that's you right, doing? it is I, Selena Miku. Wow, that's this is pretty this is pretty amazing. The last time I I played with Selena, she she called me a loser really aggressively too. I was just trying to kill Harden and Grima in the level in the normal levels, and and she called me a loser when I clicked the map. Do you still feel that way about me, Selena? Loser. Oh. <laughs> Wow, so uh, I guess for those of you that don't know, Selena here is our faithful assistant of, of Lu Bu, one of the um, one of the most prominent Fire Emblem Heroes YouTubers. He's a pretty cool guy. So if you don't know who that is, I think he likes to talk a lot about um, brain damage, maybe he likes healers a lot, something like that. What do you think, Selena? Could you tell me more about your, uh, your uh, boss? Well, I mean... Brain damage is a very serious disease. It, it happens when you play too many video games. I mean, there's really not much else to say. For all gamers here, we all are susceptible to such a disease. That is why we have people like Dr. Sakura to help us through these difficult times. Oh, is, is Dr. Sakura also going to make an appearance today? Of course, of course. If we're going to be talking about healers and the six paths of pain plus, surely Dr. Sakura must be part of this. Pain plus is a very, very, very good skill from what I've heard. Many people like to use that, along with with blowing people savagely, maybe multiple times from what I could tell. So tell me more about your boss, Lu Bu. How long has he been YouTubing? Well, since March. See, at the time we were we were having a nice and wonderful time playing near Automata. And then one day, Mid decides, oh yeah, I'm going to play some Fire Emblem Heroes, you know, because it's a new game and we haven't played anything on the cell phone for a little bit. He was a bad guy. Oh, because it, the yes. game actually turned out to be really, really fun. Yeah, and we ended up getting too into it. You see, we had this little system called uh, We're In It Together. <laughs> in it together. See, what happened is, is that we, we used to play a cell phone game before too, right? We played this stupid cell phone game called, called Astro Nest. It's, it's a really stupid game, but you know, both of us like to play space sims. We like to play fly spaceships around and it was a game about building spaceships and uh, sending them to battle other spaceships. Well, because we were all adults that can spend money, we decided that maybe we should spend a little on this. I, I don't know. Uh, what do you think? And when I asked this, I discovered that he's already spent money on this. And he's like, What about you? I don't know. Come on, we're in this together. <laughs> I got tricked into spending money on a stupid space game. So this is how it started before Fire Emblem Heroes? You had to yeah. be competitive with your friend? No, 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 no. It's not really being competitive or anything like that. It's just, you know, playing with my friends. My friend is a good guy. We've been friends for over a decade and we play all kinds of games together. So being of the same taste, it's usually easy for him to drag me into playing other games. And we were both playing near Altama at, this, at the time, so you know, while while I'm busy, you know, jumping around as 2B, slashing things, he's like, hey, yo, look, look, check out this Carol that I just pulled. Oh, check out this Takumi that I just pulled. I'm like, oh, dude, come on, man, this is this isn't right. You can't be telling me these things. Oh yeah, dude, you'll definitely like Carol. He likes to pile bodies up into the sky like a tower, Car where they're gods or Carol? something like. Are we talking about the same person here? The sword what? demon Carol? <laughs> oh, yeah. Yalton himself! Oh. I love him. He's my favorite character. He's got serious brain damage. 
so you listen to some of the things he say, you you realize worry, that he's not a man that is of sane mind. I like him a lot. I, I I try to plus ten him, but I he doesn't show up very often actually. Yeah, he he used to he tends to share banners. I did have a pretty good shot when I first got into the game, but at the time I wasn't too interested in it. I so when I first got into the game, like I said, it was like uh, March or something like that. So. There, it was like this stupid banner with like uh, six blazing heroes all smoking their 420 weeds and whatnot. And there was, it was a time when we were all hyping up uh, uh, the Quat, Quatsuna. You know, everybody was like, oh yeah, Quatsuna, so badass. You slap life and death on her. She can attack four times. Ooh, such a badass. I'm like, ooh, that, <laughs> that's so exciting. I, I, I want to do that too. But. You know, when I first started, I didn't know anything, so I, I just kind of like, oh, okay. First, I need to get actually get a hero. You know, I'm I'm just like everyone else. I'm gonna reroll a million times and try to get a hero. So my first five star ended up to be Ninian. Or Ninian, if you wanna <laughs> listen to brain damage version of her name. So Ninian has been very helpful for. I managed to pull her as my very first five star. She was uh, minus attack and plus speed, which is very good for support of her status. I'm, I'm agreeing with you, Selena. That's also what I had. So, Ninian is strictly a support, and Ninian is, cannot really fight, especially back then. She didn't have steady breath, her hyper beam does like two damage, so it was a really sad time for her. And I was like, okay, all right, Ninian needs friends. So I went and spent my free-to-play orbs and, you know, pulled a couple heroes. I managed to pull uh, Lobster. And Lobster was very good. He was very good for me, but I needed some kind of range support. So at the time, I was like, you know what? I'm suffering a little bit of brain damage right now, and everybody's just hyping this Quatsuna thing up. So, all right, I'm going to go and just dump a million orbs into this colorless thing. I can afford it, no problem. And then I, I did, and what ended up happening was that I got some horrible things. I literally got a, a plus 10 plus 10 Rebecca before I even got like six Setsuna. It was pretty bad. I was sitting at like 11 Rebecca's, like five, uh, five Jafar's, like three, three uh, Lucia's. It, it was really, really bad. It, it was terrible. You wailed yeah. on that banner? Like you went, you went like crazy, like spent a lot of money on the six person banner? Dude, I didn't know anything. I, you know, I was a new player, and a new player don't know a damn thing about this game. And at the time, you know, it seemed like that was that was the norm. You know, just kind of, I just kind of got into it, and it's like, okay, all right. And I mean, like this Setsuna is like, oh, uh, you're, you're three or four stars. You should be easy to pull, right? No, nope, no, I'm just getting five stars, one after another, after another, after another. Something is wrong here. What's going on? I just want Setsuna. Just give me my three or four stars. Whoops. No, no. I'm just going to give you a plus 10 Rebecca. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Did you know that she that Rebecca, our, our kind Rebecca doesn't even have a bowstring in her art? She shoots arrows without bowstrings. There's nothing wrong with that. That's what we call brain damage. Oh, okay. I get it now. <laughs> so d uh, did you play fire emblem before you played fire emblem heroes yes i did as a matter of fact so i first started with uh first well it was just called fire emblem at the time and i, I didn't really play much of it because i i was a busy kid uh, going to school and whatnot and not doing stupid things like spending money on cell phone games so you know i i played a little bit but i didn't really manage to get too far into it and then, Q, a million years later, we had Awakening. That, that, my friend, I spent so much time on that stupid game. I, I don't even know why. I, I don't know why I would spend so much money on a game like... I mean, I'm So much time on, on a game like Awakening. I, it was like, oh, yeah, you get to support and marry people. It is so, it is so incredibly weeb that I didn't think <laughs> I would get into it. And yet, here I am, you know, people making fun of me. My friends making fun of me on TeamSpeak's like... Yeah, I see what you posted on Game Fags. Yeah, you're like, asking about, oh, what, what people did you marry? Oh, those, those stupid topics like that. And uh, oh man, that was so embarrassing because you know that <laughs> was so incredibly weird. But but I did it. I 
you know, I, I played play through. I, you know, I beat the hard. I first started on the hard, then Lunatic, Lunatic Plus. So that that was really tough. The Lunatic Plus was something else altogether. Frederick, Fred, Freddy is a good guy. That's what I learned from all of this. Freddy is a is is the best character in the entire universe, and everybody should like Frederick. Did you did you end up plus tening Frederick, as as you praise him right now? Oh, unfortunately, there was many many different projects that I have to work on at the moment. I actually ho hosted a vote a little bit ago on my YouTube about uh, who should I plus ten next. I put down five choices. I put in um, okay, how about Raven? You know, Raven is cool because he's new, and I have like a million of copies of him, and I could plus ten him. You know, he he can go oh double life and death three so badass he, he's so fast and then there is felicia and well felicia is pretty pretty strong now because of her uh, new plates so i want to look into that as well and then i had um asama up in latin asama is a monster I let me just tell you he's he's a monster beyond com comprehension but i i can't build him because i i am kind of still thinking about what to do next who were my other two choices, though? I kind of can't remember it right now. I, I'm suffering some kind of brain damage. <sighs> Not Freddy at all. Poor Freddy. Uh, Fre Freddy. Freddy needs a needs a legendary weapon. He needs like like a pebble or something so he can throw at people. That's what he needs. He needs to like get a get an axe full of pebbles, and when he swings, uh, all these pebbles will fly into people's faces like a shotgun or something, and they go ooh. And then die and something well, like that. Well, he's got seashells. He's got seashells. Seashells? Seashells? Seashells by the seashore? No, 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 no. Pebbles. Pebbles is his trademark, not seashells. That's true. What he needs to do is, okay, you know, one of those things. I like a net or something. He just needs to go and put a bunch of, bunch of pebbles in it and just toss it at people. That, that's that's his weapon, like a range axe. Like like you know, people were talking about how they need, they wanted like some javelins or something like that. Well, now. Frederick has like this stick with a net in it, and he can just throw pebbles at people. There's there's his DC weapon. I would definitely use him if if that's his weapon. <laughs> so so he would uh, they would change Frederick's hammer weapon to just a pebble throwing axe, huh? That that's sure, that's my I mean, new immersion. Sure, I mean pebbles pebbles do blunt damage. That still hurts armor. Can you imagine that, dude? A DC weapon that hurts armor? That take death, Arja. Awesome. What's your favorite thing about Fire Emblem Heroes? Oh, uh, Fire Emblem Heroes. Well, my favorite thing about that game is that, first of all, I don't have to deal with, okay, excuse me, French bullshit percentages, okay? Like, when usually when you play a game, you know, you think about certain things you want to do, you make plans, and all of a sudden, Hey, you just missed a 99% shot. What am I going to do? I just died to a critical hit. Oh, I better turn off the system and start over again. That's, that I didn't have to deal with in Fire Emblem Heroes because, you know, at that game at least spared us from such horrible things. Percentages is not something you want to deal with. In, well, okay, it, it is when you summon, but, you know, when you actually play the game, you don't want to have to deal with percentages. It, it, it will give you brain damage. It will change you forever. I play XCOM. I know this. You mean when you're point blank to someone and you shoot their feet as opposed to shooting them right in front of you? <laughs> All right, well, okay. In XCOM, you can have like the biggest, biggest, baddest shotgun in the world. You point it in their face and poof, all these shells mysteriously just don't hit, hit them and the alien just looks at you like you're some kind of idiot and then murders you. That's what happens in XCOM. You can actually miss 100% shots in XCOM. It's a beautiful game for how stupid it is. <laughs> and many people have recommended it to me. Oh yeah, like I said, it's a beautiful game for, for what it is. I, I actually um, have a bunch of Fire Emblem characters in it. I, I actually played a Let's Play of XCOM a little bit ago. I should really go back into it. I want to play it on Legendary difficulty. Just, that's the hardest one. I was just playing on Commander uh, Iron Man. I was uh, I I obviously have Selena in there. I have uh, I have Baruka. I have, uh, I have all kinds of interesting characters that you will find very interesting and looks just like as they would in Fire Emblems. Hmm. Straight out of XCOM. 
So, I guess the most interesting question to ask you then is, did you play Fire Emblem Warriors? Because your name is Lu Bu, right? So... <laughs> that, that... that should go without saying. That should go without saying. I played the hell out of that game. All right, no. I played it when I can, but I did play a lot of it when I, when I did. I, I... I really liked the game. Yeah, it went into a very interesting direction lately, too. It's like, ooh, now people's clothes explode when they get hurt. Ooh, ooh, now you get to see, like, now you get to see Camilla get knocked, like, five feet in the air, and all of a sudden her over clothes falls off, and she bounces all over the place like a balloon. That is Fire Emblem Warriors now. I haven't actually played that update. I, I, I kind of want to turn it on and see what you're talking about. <laughs> you should! <laughs> It'll give you brain damage! Oh, boy. I played it before that update. I'm definitely curious now. Wait, does this apply to Niles too? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I, I, I should check out more of Niles' support. Actually, he, I, he, he, he's hitting on. He's hitting on every males. It's really, it's really, really, really hot. He, he was hitting on Frederick when I saw him last. He was out of control. All right. Uh, Ooh, yeah. sh show's over. I, I gotta go, guys. Got to that, that sounds a little bit too exciting for me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but what about that time when Frederick Benzer would pick up that pebble? <laughs> uh oh. <laughs> all right, all right. Let's move on. So, what should we talk about next? I think I think we can get more of your uh, opinions on things, Selena. Let's let's talk about what's going on in Fire Emblem Heroes. How about that that Grand Hero battle, Takumi? What'd you think of that? Hmm, Takumi is interesting in that he has this stupid three-turn counter thing that's going on that he goes and blows her face off with a rail gun. That was, that's very interesting, and it actually was kind of, it, it's pretty challenging if you're not prepared for it, because of the way the map is laid, laid out and the way the uh, reinforcements just pop out from those little holes. It's actually a pretty hard to deal with if you're not properly prepared for it. So, for me, it wasn't so bad because my healers actually like being reduced to, like, um, a certain amount of health without actually entering the combat. Because then they can proc their brazen attack dev and do chunks of damage. Ooh. So you ended up just stalling them? Mm, no, that, that wouldn't be right either. I, I actually went out and used uh, Elise and, and Priscilla to strike out at people. Sakura didn't really do so well with attacking because she's more of a tank than anything else. And there is Maria. Maria is really terrifying. She just destroys everything she sees. Maria's the fastest, isn't she? She can run real oh, fast. Yeah. Oh yeah, Maria is extremely fast. She's blisteringly fast. You give her some attack and she can tear just about anything apart. I was uh, doing Arena a little bit ago, and I was just watching her just kill this this Harden like it, it was nothing. I was really terrified when I saw that Harden. He was like, oh, yeah, look at me. I'm a big guy with Soviet mustache. And I hit him a couple of times. He gets angry, shows me his teeth, and then he disappears. That's that's how terrified I dreaded Maria is. What What is your uh, your healer composition, then? Well, it's like any typical MMOs you would play. You should obviously have healers of course you can't do a party without healers you know it's like in final fantasy 11 you go around with no healers <laughs> people are not going to stick with your party for very long final fantasy 11 is a very rough game but anyway so yeah you need your healers healers are very important and of course we have a team full of healers and then you have dps healers and tank healers so you need to look at their stats and think about what they do in most cases sakura is my main tank and then Elise as like my main DPS, Maria as a DPS, Priscilla as support. She's she's very good at support, and she can still do damage. She shouldn't she shouldn't be overlooked just because of her um, you know lesser stats compared to Elise. So so you have the uh, the tank healer, the healer healer, the DPS healer, and what's the fourth one? Support healer. S support healer. What does the support healer do? Well, support healer just uses, uses her C slot to go and um, give Elise uh, a cavalry buffs, really. I mean, she turns Elise into a violent beast. And I intend to eventually give her something like chill speed on her B slot to really ruin someone's day. Ooh, chill speed. How do you feel about all those healers not being able to inherit so many cool abilities? At first, I was really frustrated, you know. It, it was really stupid, because, like, 
oh yeah, the best I could get in terms of attack was like attack plus three. Then you get like something like uh, fire. What was it called? Fire, fire boost. Then you could get plus six. But then you, uh, you know, once you get hit, you can forget about that. So it, for a little while there, they don't really have much to play with. Except, I guess you can use Close Counter. Close Counter was pretty funny for healers, especially Sakura. Sakura really likes that. But um, for the most part, it wasn't until it wasn't until Brazen Attack Dev that I seriously had some really disgusting tools to work with. But otherwise, you know, I'll, I'll just go with what I can get. You know, plus three attack, plus three speed. You know, it's still there. It's still very impactful, especially speed, because you know, speed is a very interesting stat. You mentioned uh, your crazy team composition with attack healer, tank healer, uh, sorry, attack being DPS, healer, healer, and support healer. What, you, what about them uh, being close together, you know, encouraging those bonds, all those bond skills we've had? Have you tried using those ones? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I, that was the very first thing I, I thought about when bonds came out. Except the problem is, is that I couldn't pull any. Okay, so when I spend money, it's all about an objective goal in mind, okay? While bond skill is very useful, it does have some problems. It, it requires you to sit in a in like a certain spot. It requires you to be positioning your units differently. You can't just have freedom of movement when you use bond. So I didn't really like it all that much, though it is handy for when a healer needs to go and tank things. It is very important to do that when uh, with Sakura. But sometimes, you know, you want to have close close counter so that you can have fear plus spread fear on the enemy when they hit you with a melee attack it's really it's fairly important that you have something like that handy but you know bonds bonds is a little restrictive so i didn't really like going into it and then some you know i have to spend money to pick it up it was a five-star exclusive skill it was either you know picking up Nawi or picking up stupid just, yeah, free arm. Free arm is really stupid. I I, I didn't want to pick her up. It was, it, it was a legendary banner, you know. She was sharing banner with what who? Spring Xander, Spring Kata. Yeah, that that was no. That was, uh, yeah, it was Spring. Yeah, it, it was no good. Or it was just absolutely terrible. There's no way I'm gonna summon on that stupid banner. You know, when you spend money, you have to have an objective goal in mind. If you don't. You know, if you don't, you end up wasting a lot of money. Of course, you know, you, you could you could be like one of those guys who just spend a million dollars on every banner. But if you're <laughs> when you play this game, you should really have a goal in mind. And that's actually kind of what I should talk about, too, next when it comes to spending money. See, I, I kind of regret spending money in this game in the first place. I would have much preferred to be a free to play player. I made a terrible mistake when I did the Setsuna thing, okay? Like, so I actually, I actually went and contacted Nintendo. I was like, "Oh look, I made a terrible mistake. Please, please, let me just return this. I, you know, let let me just return these orbs. Don't pretend none of this ever happened." <laughs> they, they of course said, "No, no, no." In fact, they they actually say, "All right, we don't offer refunds for Mar Mar Super Mario Run." I'm like, "Yeah, okay." Or obviously, they didn't even look at my request, and they're just like, "Nope, you you, you can't get refunds." So I Super Mario them. Run. <laughs> yeah, Super <laughs> Mario Run. That stupid cell phone game that they had before uh, Heroes, I think. But anyway, so I, I contacted Google Play. Google Play was like, "Oh, okay. Well, you know, I we could, but we can't do all of it." I'm like, "Oh, damn it! All right, fine. You know what? You know what? I made a mistake. I I can I can live with it. All right." I decided that I will stick with the way I am, and it, it was good. I get to play with a lot of tools and toys and whatnot, you know. I can build whatever I want, but ultimately I feel like I could just go and be a free-to-play player this whole time because you, when you really think about it, each month, if you don't spend orbs, you get like, what, 200, 300? And in February of this year, we get 400 orbs. That's a lot of orbs if you don't spend, if you don't spend them on YOLO summons, if you don't just summon... Because, oh, yeah, this uh, Thorja is not wearing anything. She's so hot, I'm going to spend some orbs on her. <laughs> yeah, if you don't do that, if you don't do stuff like that, you can actually save up enough orbs after a couple months to plus 10 a unit. And uh, with a couple other pity breakers on the side that you can use as materials. That is what I think is what I should have done. But, you know, since I kind of spent uh, thousands of dollars already, I, I kind of can't. So you you've dug yourself into the rabbit hole. Is that right? Nope. I mean, once you spend money, you just can't go back. It, that's the end of it. You know. 
All I, all I can remember is um, your your truck of orbs with uh, with legendary Ike there waiting. <laughs> I saw you. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> you mean the way? You mean the way? First, you know, legendary Ike watches me flushes all these orbs down the toilet, then set all my paper money on fire with Seekbird, and then goes and pulls a big dump truck full of those wonderful orbs and dump them in a landfill. Yeah, I remember that very well. And it's all Seekbird's fault. I didn't even want a plus ten legendary Ike at the time. I'm like, dude, I just want some Seekbird so I can slap his attack tactics on my healers and call and turn them into monsters. Which I did. They, they are monsters, but, well, I accidentally pulled a bunch of Ikes before. <laughs> so, you know, one thing led to another. I have now have a plus 10 super magic Ike. I've met a lot of people. Not many are as odd as you, though. <laughs> oh, Ike, Ike just called you odd, Selena. How do you feel about that? I had... <laughs> That's all I gotta say. <laughs> So, Selena, did you end up doing some dancing? What dancing? Yeah, I mean, did you not from uh, from Laszlo anything during the tap tap battle mode? Weren't you dancing? Oh, there and there? oh God, you're not bringing that up, are you? You know how I feel about that tap battle thing. It gave me significant brain damage. I wasn't sure I was gonna actually live through the night after that. I was like, <coughs> why? Why can't? Why are you not reacting, stupid? Stupid button. But I, I want to play on expert mode, okay? So when you play, you know, something like this, you're either full casual or you're trying to aim for a high score. So obviously, I try for aiming a high score. But well, if this was any indication, I'm actually pretty bad at this tapping game. I, I was like, oh, dude, how how do I get my four fingers to fit on the screen? I like, how do I hold a cell phone and still use four fingers to tap on the screen? Oh, how do I get the timing right? I can't play music because if I play music, I, I get I get copyright issues from Nintendo because see what happens with Nintendo is that they, they copyright stupid music that they have and then they, you know, steal all your monetization for all your hard work, you know? Def says thanks. Def says thanks. So I have to go <laughs> <laughs> I have to go and mute that, and I, and you know, play my own music over it. So, so you know, I don't have any rhythm going on. I just have to look at the screen and see what's going on. And then, oh, uh, what's going on? All these flying units just show us up on my screen. I was like, hey, where exactly are you going? Are you going to the bottom one? Are you going to the top one? The middle one? No, wait, no, no, no that's not it. Hey, wait, there's a horse coming. So I ended up give, giving myself significant brain damage, so I didn't do that again afterwards. I just kind of went casual, you know, and then I have all my healers dip in a wonderful pond, all allegedly naked, and that was really hot, and that was the end of it. So overall, a very successful mode, or do you think you're going to be calling up Laszlo to get some dance tips? No, 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 no. Definitely, definitely definitely no dance tips and definitely not from laszlo definitely not it was it was a difficult time for me and I, I i don't feel i don't feel i have the time to actually master this it's a good mode don't get me wrong it's a fun little distraction it's it's cute i like it a lot and you get rewards off of it you know you get rewards off of it despite whatever difficulty you play it's it's cute i like it you know it's something for everyone it's you know i, I can't see how anyone can actually hate this thing True. How do you feel about the new modes then? The rival domains, the blessed gardens. Do you think that you and your healers are going to be taking advantage of these awesome new modes? Well, I talked about it a little bit ago in my recent video. So with rival domains, if if it is indeed something like 20 units on screen, oh, 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 oh the six pass of pain plus is gonna go on a hunting spree. They're just gonna go and find people grouped up and they're just gonna shower them with endless amounts of pain. So many pain. And then, you know, we just send in one healer, like Jenny or something, and just have, have her kill them all with Vantage. It is very disgusting and it will be something worth watching. As for Blessed Gardens, I feel like it's not as bad as some people say, you know, it's not like a money grab or anything because they allow you to use your legendary heroes or whatever unit you have blessed. They've been handing us out and have handing blessings out like uh, candy lately. 
I guess it's because, you know, the mode is kind of stupid in the first place. The, the blessing thing, you know, you, you, in most cases, people are just hoarding them. They're not sure what to do with them. They don't even have a legendary hero sometimes. So, you know, they don't know what to do with them. So now you have this mode. So you have some incentive to go and slap your stupid blessings on your characters. And then you can send them in. And I'm guessing this mode is really just there for you to collect orbs and feathers. It's like an ATM. That, that's what that is. It's a blessing ATM. A blessing ATM. Do you feel like do you feel like because all these weapon refinements happening that any of your um, amazing healers are going to be getting a, a weapon anytime soon? And if so, which one? Hmm. Well, currently what they have now is very awesome, but I am hoping that like um, Sakura and Elise would get a legendary weapon. But I ha haven't played Fate, so I can't say, you know, if they actually have a legendary weapon in their own game. But if Hinoka's spear is any indication, I can probably s surmise, ooh, Sakura's spear. Uh, Sakura's spear. Sakura's uh, staff. I think it's called a Sun Festival or something like that, actually. So that could that could happen, you know, it could carry unique effects. I mean, we see um, we see Loki, right? Ubisaurus sex, you know, using her... Um, uh, movement ploy across the screen that's that's interesting mechanics you know that can cause traffic jam that see when ai's don't move properly they give themselves brain damage and they end up clogging the screen and you can use that to your advantage you can keep the enemy from advancing you can keep them from attacking and keep them from advancing you can do all kinds of stupid things with that stupid with that stupid um mobility ploy and hopefully it comes out as a skill as well oh, man that would be so awesome but in general, you know, I can expect some kind of things that they'll do for healers. It's just a matter of when, really. Hmm. Maybe Loki herself will be the first one to ride the um, the steed into battle for all your other healers. If Loki was to show up, would you have her take over someone's spot? Uh, I mean, I cycle around my healers all the time. I, I, I don't really have, like, a set said number you know sometimes i use jenny though i haven't used her in a while sometimes i use another one it's you know it depends on the situation you know they have different stats they have different roles they some fit better than others it's like you know sometimes you have a big screwdriver sometimes you use one that's slightly smaller that that's the one that can turn the screw then you use that one that's that's how it works for me when it comes to healers not to mention you know a six pass of pain plus i kind of have to run six different healers you know how can i fit six of them unless i use unless i bring them into rival domains or something like that you know i cycle around them and if loki does come out ubisaurus sex would be very interesting but she she doesn't have she she use she's for there for you know her mobility ploy not for pain that's for other healers, you know. Sometimes I need her, sometimes I don't. That's how, that's how it's going to work for me if she ever comes out. I don't know if she will, though, because she's a very central villain character at the moment, so it's kind of tough to expect her to show up. Let's see. Hopefully, now that we've run past four legendary heroes, maybe we'll finally see a colorless legendary hero, and then that will be the leader to take your healers into new heights. But since you don't have that much trouble with the Infernal Grand Hero battle, you're probably good. So, since we're talking about healers, maybe maybe you should call over Dr. Sakura then, yeah? Sure, sure. Why don't we do that right now? Let me go give her a call. Hello, Dr. Sakura. How are you doing? I'm doing alright. Thank you. What would you like to talk about today? I'd like to hear about your healing methods and how you and your squad like to succeed in all these difficult, difficult tasks that most people, you know, don't give you credit for, for being the support that you are. Well, I think it's a stigma that came from healers not doing enough when they, before the weapon refinery systems. So what ends up usually happening with healers back then was that unless you run rehabilitation, it was like, mm healer wasn't very good and rehabilitate was something you have to you know wait until you, your unit gets beaten to an inch of their lives so it was it was really tough to heal someone back then you know at most you're pushing 15 from recover so people aren't healing enough and healers aren't doing any damage they could if they run raffle staff but in general that's something you stick with jenny usually with a healer you kind of just 
use use them to heal for 15 or rehabilitate when the time comes but there was really no reason to use them unless you you, you want to show off i i did do a thing with uh lloyd where i have to heal his face cancer that's when i had to go and get my medical team over and bring in nurse bubasaurus rex to bounce him across the river to cure lloyd's face cancer we managed to pull it off in the end you know it was a difficult infernal map but with my healers we were able to pull it off because absorb even back then was a very very powerful skill you can the, the idea that soul procs after every attack is very disgusting it is a very disgusting skill like when it comes to tanking you, you there's two schools once is you have a lot of defense and two is you heal while you defend that's that's a that's how you tank in games in general so you would call your healers maybe some sort of blood suckers, some vampires. Yes, vampires, yeah, that's what they are. But yeah, thanks to that, Lloyd, Lloyd now looks much better. Now he, he's he's on his road to recovery, and everything is good. But then you know, weapon refinery came, and that changes the whole thing with healers altogether. One, most importantly, it gave them high SP skills. Like their staffs contain like. 450 SP to, to use now. Their heals it costs 450 SP. So they have a they have a lot of SP in their skills. So they climb in the BST charts a little bit more than you may think. So they're not actually that bad to use if you want to score in an arena. Like you can see me do some arena runs with my when I have a healer around, and you can still see me go and enter tier 20 without any issues. So healers aren't so bad. Maybe. And um, with new toys like Pain Plus, which you already know, it's pretty disgusting. And not to mention, you know, AOE debuffs. You know, that's this is stuff of dreams. Back then, we can only debuff like one unit. Now we can debuff an entire group, allowing them to just tank pretty much any attacks afterwards. It's very handy to have a support around, especially on difficult maps. So you can control the damage you take, heal it, and then retaliate. Interesting. So how come people don't give healers enough credit then? How come no one likes playing the support role? I think I think we can credit this to like Marth, right? Marth had his Falchion upgrade and everyone was upset. Maybe this has something to re related to how your healers and your squad just doesn't get enough credit, enough love. Mm, well, that's another thing I want to touch upon actually, since you brought up Marth of all people. Marth is a great character, okay? He he his his he's called Prince Overdrive in one of my builds, and that's because he runs his unique Falchion with two to all stats drive. And if you were to use the C slot and the recent um, drive death thing, you get like you get a pretty sizable uh, stat increase for your units. If you really want to, you can push for uh, let me see three six eight eight defense on a drive. That's no laughing matter. That's a lot of defense for for your team it's and then some you're adding like attack you're adding like speed you're attacking resistance prince overdrive is not to be trifled with and yet people don't see this people like oh yeah he, he doesn't kill people in one hit it's he, it's he doesn't like annihilate someone like palm you know he's all automatically bad no 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 people are, people have been in the one hit ko mentality for too long now you know people have been always thinking about oh yeah we got to think of some way to kill this guy in a single shot and then that'd be the end of it. Well, that's I, I, I'm afraid that that's not how it's going to be for much longer because of all these stupid tanks that they've been bringing out lately. You know, every unit these days have more BST. So if they're not in the attack and the, and speed, where do you think they go? In the defense, in HP. So you're going to find you're, in, there's going to be times where, oh, I can't kill this guy. Oh, and now we have chill speed as, as well. So you're going to find yourself, oh, I can't kill this guy. You know, I used to be able to kill this guy, but now I can only hit him once, and now he's going to rip my face off with r r repulse. So it, it's, it's really difficult to kill people after a certain amount of time. And when that happens, you want to have good support. You want to have good medical support, and you want to have good stat support. So I feel like people people just kind of need to outgrow themselves a little bit. They just need to, you know get a new mentality when it comes to playing this game because things are going to change so what do you think people should do to tr give healers a try should they choose their favorite healer at three stars four stars and work on them no yeah, i mean healers are actually very easy to come by you know feathers feathers are plenty you know you go and do a um 
a voting gauntlet, you have about 10k, and then you do an arena, and you know, you have something enough to make yourself a five star healer. You know, healers don't even need to have, don't even need to be plus 10. You know, you, they, they're just there to heal and give all kinds of tricky debuffs like gravity or fear or just pain in general to, you know, support the battlefield. That's what they're supposed to be doing. What I'm doing with my units are a little different, but that's because, you know, I play a little different from everyone else. But, you know, in general, healers providing support is much better on a team that you can't kill in one hit. Like I said, you're going to find yourself in situations down the line where you can't kill a unit. Then you need to do some tricks to keep yourself alive because all Fire Emblem games, you don't want to die. You die, you lose your points. You have to start over again. So that's what healers are there to do, to keep you alive. So who should people start with? Their favorite character, or do you have any recommendations? Well, I mean, if you do have a favorite character, that's great. But you have to also consider how well they fit in your team as well. But in general, though, healers don't see much battle, so it should be all right. You know, you can just, just put them in the back or something like that. With chill speed, you know, chill speed is a perfect skill for, for healers. You don't you you don't generally don't want to use them on combative type like um, Celica coming with chill speed was kind of weird because Celica doesn't really, Celica prefers something else for her B skills maybe wrath maybe vantage maybe you know sword breaker in case you fight someone that can wreck her or someone running sword breaker by themselves as well you know you want to run something else for B skills when it comes to combative units but with healers you have three slots to go and slap on chill speed and other such things like that. Supporting is far more, more important, and since they don't see much combat, you know, it doesn't really matter what you put on them. You can just, okay, look, you can give them something like, like, um, ploys, for instance. You can give them ploy, chill speed, you can give them a lot of resistance. Healers usually come with a lot of resistance, so you can give them, uh, I'll give them a bunch of ploys. You know, you, you have ploys, like attack ploy and defense ploy in the uh, seals right now, so you can give them like two ploys for a C slot, for your seal slots, and then you can give the entire enemy aids from across the screen. There's nothing you can do about it. That's how healers should be played if, uh, if a team like that. But you can still use your favorite unit. That's that's why, man, I, I kind of went overboard talking there. That's okay. I think all of us have one or two healers that they should try out, give a chance to. I agree with you. Also, the the point of chill speed being on the B slot, that's really uh, creative. I didn't consider that very well. Uh, everyone who's like thinking about how to use that, but putting it on a healer, it's brilliant, especially from a support aspect. What about that creative vampire build? Who's the best for that? What is the mm. vampire build? Could you explain it to everyone? So vampire build is pretty handy for certain characters like Jenny who hits really, really, really hard. See, what happens when it comes to that is that when you hit someone, you do a lot of damage and then you heal half of it back. So if you give her quick repose and um, something like, say, oh, speed ploy to slow them down so they then can't actually double Jenny, Jenny could actually heal more damage than she takes. That's how I... That's how I... Uh, True soloed Inferno Oliver with that. That's the very first healer that ever true soloed the game. Yeah, a Grand Hero battle. That's how I did it because Jenny was able to slow down everybody, and when they hit her, she retaliates, heals all the way back, and the enemy dies. It's really disgusting. You should give it a try if you can. With close counter? With close counter, yes. Oh, wait, no, actually, no, no. That time I didn't. I, I use um, Brazen Attack Dev because. One, the enemy is a lot of range, so I don't really have to care about close counter all that much. And two, it increases her attack to an astronomical amount and gives her some defense on top of it to deal with the melee units. So the melee units tries to hit Jenny. They don't do any damage. Jenny has close defense as a seal, and and she has um, a brazen attack dev active, so they can't do any damage to her. Meanwhile, the range unit attacks Jenny, and Jenny just tears them to shreds and heals right afterwards. And afterwards, you know, after they're all dead, Jenny goes and takes care of the melee attack attackers attacking her, and that's how she clears the map. Hmm. You said quick repose, though. So is that on the B slot then? Yes, yes. Oh, but if you're soloing a map, you know, it doesn't really matter, right? I see. What sort of builds would you recommend then for maybe some of the more common healers that people like to use? Something like. Maybe Maria? I think people don't give Maria enough credit. How about Maria? How do we use Maria? 
Oh man, Maria's a demon, okay? Maria is very, very terrifying healer. She, I don't know why people don't give her enough credit because she is actually extremely tanky for what she is. You have a speed that high, you cannot double her. She is so incredibly fast. And it's not like she has paper defenses. She's not, she's not like Lucius with like 13, 13 death. <laughs> I get hit by something remotely pointy and I just pass away. No, no, no. Maria actually has a decent amount of defense and she has a decent amount of resistance as well. She's actually very tough to bring down. And her attack isn't exactly that bad either. And you also have to consider this. A lot of units tends to be in the uh, tanky high dev side on the you know usually units have like high dev low resistance and usually sites like game press recommends <laughs> more minus res on top of it so they become prey to healers he healers will tear them to shreds <laughs> game press <laughs> do you recommend that people use that resource for their uh, healer builds then a uh, game press the site yeah Mm, I mean, they might have like a good build once and then, but the problem with them is that they're a little, I, I feel like they're a little biased sometimes, and not to mention, I, I don't know if they actually play their units sometimes, they they build their units not the way I recommend, I would prefer using game press though, to find your IVs, to know your stats, you see if your unit gets a super boon somewhere, but other than that, you know, it Build should be something you figure out on your own, for your own taste. You know, not every build's going to work for every character. You also have to consider how well this unit fits into your team as well. You know, usually people, what, what they put on the screen, you know, it's, it's good for that unit in a vacuum, but not in your team. So when, I highly recommend building it yourself. But sometimes, you know, sometimes there are some really overpowered skills out there that, that are just really the best. But in general, you should build units according to tailor to your needs rather than you know, some other assholes advice how do you feel about that bra the new brazen defense resistance skill would that be really good on a healer then maybe like a oh, tanky yeah. one like uh ozama maybe or sakura sakura has pretty good defenses too oh yeah oh yeah definitely that dude with that they they can stay alive indefinitely however i i'm still kind of leaning towards the um attack dev at the moment because having more attack is really scary on a healer you know people s still underestimate healers damage well when they suddenly gain seven attack and you were attacking your weak little resistance you might change your opinion of them a little bit i remember in dying. general i see a lot of physical attackers too you know not too many mages especially on the higher um higher end of the arena so yes i remember losing to a miracle brazen attack defense elise she did not die, and then I lost. I still have brain damage from that situation. Yeah, yeah that, that, that would give you brain damage. <laughs> you should come see me after this, and I'll take care of you. Thank you, Doctor. That, that was definitely one of my nightmares. Please send Elise my deepest regards. Yes, I will be sure to let Elise know. So you mentioned Marth, but how about some other characters that aren't healers that you think you've seen could have some decent potential? Oh yeah, there are, there are many units out there that have decent potentials. In fact, I think that, in my opinion, every unit can be made the strongest unit in the game. I don't believe in tier lists. I tend to just build whatever unit I feel like, and I, if I like them enough, I'll turn them into monsters. Right, for instance, this is a very easy example, right? Like, Botre. So he's he's actually a very powerful character. I mean, like, all things aside, his stats are completely built, uh, completely set up to be a physical tank that does a lot of damage. And since, you know, on the upper arena, you know, you're usually just fighting tanks, you're usually just fighting armor or heavy infantry. You don't usually deal with mages that much. I mean, like, occasionally you fight, uh, like, a Tharja or... Or something from time to time but it doesn't matter because Bartory is gonna walk over there with his stupid hammer he's gonna bash your face in and that's what Bartory does that's why I, I like him a lot people give him a hard time because you know I don't want to summon for him I, you see his smug face like <laughs> every time you summon like yeah you know he, he he may look like an asshole but he's actually a good guy he's actually a great guy he, he might he can carry you he can beat content for you his hammer is no joke there's so many armor units now you need to grab the stupid thing and bash larger in the head repeatedly 
And so, so you know, Botre is very good. And um, like Merrick, Merrick could be very useful too. Actually, one of the tankiest uh, mage around. Like him a lot. He's. I'm thinking about an anti-aircraft build for him, and maybe some other stuff like that. Anti-aircraft. You know, yeah, anti-aircraft. Yeah, I'll turn him into an anti-aircraft cannon with um with bond. You know, we were just talking about bonds, right? Can, can, imagine Merrick, okay? He, he's a building. He's a tower. He just sits there, and then all he does is when he sees a goddamn aircraft comes by. You mean? You mean? It's exactly. It's shah. And then they die. That's that's what I want my Merrick to be. If I ever get my, I get a chance to build him, unfortunately I have a million projects, so I can't work on that. But just just think of him. Just know that he has infinite potential with him, and don't just switch out his Excalibur for Dark Excalibur. I mean, his Dark Excalibur build works too. Now this unique ability to target um, resistances of flyers, like say Faruka, for instance. Okay, Faruka is very tanky. We all know this. But what about a resistance? <laughs> Becomes Merrick food. Let me tell you that. Or America. <laughs> America. <laughs> uh, perfect. Perfect. So what do you think the biggest factor that we have here for people is, you know, since some of us have to spend lots of money and some of us don't, should people be spending money to be working on their favorite American projects or should we hold back in just like everything else you know you want to want to work on what what fits well with your team you know before you do anything in this game you want to make sure you have a working team you don't want to just go with every gimmick like I did with Setsuna not end up getting her and then get a whole bunch of ridiculous things but popping up that's not what you you should do I was young and naive I made mistakes but you learn. You learn from doing. So if you don't spend money on the game, you have to especially take care of this. You do manage your feathers. You want to know what you do with your feathers. You need to make sure that you build your team accordingly. You can't just, you know, spend uh, orbs and just because, oh, yeah, Alina's out. She's giving me a gift. I like gifts. I don't have any Valentine, so please give me more gifts, Alina. So it's like one of these things where you got to make sure you have units that fit when you summon it's the same principle when it comes to spending feathers feathers is f a free to play currency you have to be really really careful how you spend them even with me right now even with me who spent thousands of dollars on this stupid game i still have to manage my feathers carefully i need to know what i want to build and i also need to know what i need to transfer with skill inheritance there's a lot of useful skills out there that are locked to five stars and you need to give you need to pay 20k feathers for so a lot to think about when it comes to things like this but in general there are some units that are really good that you can five stars for free to play players like the Bartore I mentioned he's one Hinata is also very good with doing that because he's also a very focused unit and then there is uh, oh Arrow. He's, she's very very good she's absolutely amazing who she's a president Oboro oh best president tank Oboro. in the universe have she's you, she's have, very good. Have you used President Oboro? Is that how do I use her? Yes. Well, currently I use her as a distant counter user, but there's other ways to use her as well. You can use um, Steady Breath, Quick Repose, for instance. It's really tanky on both sides. It just doesn't have speed. So what? You don't need speed. If you're tanky, all right, you can get hit like two times, three times, four times, a million times. It doesn't matter. You can tank it and then afterwards you just simply rip their face off and they die that's how that's how it works when, when it comes to tanky units speed you see a lot of people overrate speed i think speed is some it's a good stat it's it's a little weird sometimes you know speed is like some things that you you don't want too much of and you sometimes you don't want too little of in general you want to keep it around the five range you know you don't want too much you don't want too little but would characters like obaro who doesn't really have that much speed to begin with just dump the stupid speed and just, you know, focus on your defense. And a lot of these bad units in the three star, in three star, four star range just so happens to be those kinds of units. The guys like Mobaro, Hinata, Florina. Florina can be very tanky. Florina is actually 
a very scary cat. She's she's got a ton of HP. She has a ton of res. If you work on her defense a little, she's actually pretty tough to bring down. Guess what she's carrying? Carrying a big old heavy spear, and she's gonna ram that stupid thing up Zelgius' ass, and he's finished. Finished, I tell you. What if what if America comes by and he comes with the anti-aircraft guns? You fly out of his range and you toss someone else in. Hey. Mixed teams. <laughs> Mixed teams these days, I think, has a lot of potential. But what you could do is, oh, say you're running with, um, with the nice Empress Sanaki. Okay, Sanaki is a monster, right? So, no, America tries to bring me down. So I'm going to get the Empress of Begnon. Beg you pronounce that country name. Remember, I didn't play the game. Big just, known, you know, big known, yeah. Okay, so you, so you just go and subplex, just Keflorina subplex this Empress in. The little Empress will just suddenly go and, and summons a Supernova and with uh, double Bond. So if you use attack res Bond or attack the Bond with her along with her uh, Pref weapon, she has like, what, ten, 10 extra attack on top of that amazing attack she already has? She's going to obliterate Merrick. Merrick will not survive. His head will explode. He doesn't really have that much res. Then he's finished. Mixed teams nowadays, I think, can be can have a lot of potential as well. Back then, they didn't have any support, but now there's a lot of fun toys available for them, especially with guidance too. Yeah, there's definitely a lot of those characters with the high attack that can make some really cool stuff happen, especially since you always make these kind of creative builds. We uh we like to use the Lena over here with our project for a one-shot build. Have you ever seen this before? Where uh, you run into arena and there's like three infantry pulses and a quick impulse for an instant like glacies or oh AOE God, special? Have you seen I that run before? that all the time. When I, okay, so when Norian Summer came out, that was that was the thing that I wailed on. People are thinking about getting um, Summer Corn. I mean, I still got her anyway, but people were focusing on Summer Corn because she wasn't wearing any clothes. All she, she, she was, She's, she's got a really naughty face when she gets damaged. Most people, people want that. I I wanted this this half-naked guy with no nipples because he gives me infantry pulse. That's what I wanted. And I wailed the hell out of him. I got like six or seven of him. And I, I was really lucky too because Elise was sharing color with, with him. But I managed to luck out. I didn't get any, any lolly Elise there. I just pulled a whole bunch of half-naked guys and then I just feed them just just have like oh guys like uh virian for instance for example virian just have to open his big noble mouth and eat this guy majestically then provide infantry balls to his teammates so that his teammates can one-shot people in the face <laughs> you have great taste dr sakura you have great taste thank you thank you did you happen to marry him in fades I didn't play Fates, unfortunately, so I did not do such a thing. Would you? Ooh, ooh, that, I don't know. I mean, there's a lot of um, there's a lot of good good guys out there. I don't know. I will, I will have to play the game first to to give a more concise answer. He he he's he's, he's up there. But I mean, Niles Niles is pretty good too. I think he he works both ways, from what I understand. Mm, indeed. Would you fall for Niles? Did you fall for him in Warriors? Oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah. He's amazing, dude. He jokes half the time. He doesn't he doesn't even take the fighting seriously. He just jokes half the time. I love him. He's amazing. He's my kind of guy. <laughs> you know, I, I like look, I, I understand, you know, we're fighting some kind of demon dragon and all that. We do that all the time. I get bored and tired of this, but you know, all of a sudden this this brown guy shows up with white hair and he's like oh hey frederick how about you bend over and pick up this pebble over there i'm like mmm delicious guy this guy i like this guy i want him on my team all the time unfortunately you can't because sometimes you gotta swap characters to uh farm supports but he, he's a he's a very interesting and colorful character and we need more of him what, what do you think about leon then are you a fan of leon because of Niles, Leon. Niles goes both ways, but uh, but Leon only goes one way. Uh, I mean, you know, that's how it is. I mean, he's 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 very fabulous. You know, I, 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 I'm not I'm not actually gay or anything. But you know what I mean. 
I mean, you are you are you are a woman, so it makes sense. <laughs> yes, you're absolutely correct. Absolutely correct. I should watch out for people like Soleil. Yeah, Soleil might might really come on to you, Doctor. You have to you have to watch out. You're very very. Well, from what I understand, from what I understand, Soleil is currently cock blocked by uh, a nasty situation where she cannot marry any females in the game. So I think I'll be okay for it. You think Soleil is fabulous? Or are you trying to cool. avoid? <laughs> cool. How about her fascination for tea? Are you a tea, tea drinker, is, Doctor? Tea, tea is tea is very, very, very fabulous. I love tea a lot myself. I mean, like, dude, I was just talking about Virian. Virian is a very, very cool guy. He happens to like tea too. No coffee for you, Doctor. Uh, coffee. I, I like coffee, but since I don't usually drink coffee all that much, it if I, I can drink it at like 9 a.m. In, in the morning, and then I'll stay up until 9 a.m. on the next day. That's how that's how bad coffee is for me. I I get really affected by it. I can't sleep after I have coffee. Well, thank you, doctor. Uh, let's see if any of our clients tonight want to ask you some questions. Yes. Sure, sure. Any questions you like, you see. If you're in the chat, feel free to give Dr. Score any sort of questions you'd like before she has to get back to her next patient. I think they have brain damage. I don't know. I don't see any questions. Uh, there's just a little bit of a, just a little bit of a delay usually. Ah, how thick is Sakura? Oh my God, dude! I can't answer that one. I don't know. I guess uh, <laughs> it depends on what you're looking at. Okay, if you're looking at um, Elise and Sakura, that they can go up to like 11. If you're just looking at her, it turns into one. Is is Lucius a good pain user? I wouldn't. Yeah, Lucius is a great pain user. I mean, he comes with the skill. Let's see, is F Corin? What do you recommend? Hmm, are you talking about like the regular F Corin, like the dragon one? That's the case. Uh, definitely dark breath and um, wind sweep. Wind sweep. It's one of these situations where wind sweep actually is handy for her. That's it's steady breath, easy. right? The, the the steady breath, wind breath, uh, wind sweep combination. I've seen that a lot, Doctor. Yeah, it's really disgusting. It is. It makes me physical, physically ill. I don't like that. Let's see, best IVs for plus tanning a Selena. Let's see, I I prefer minus HP and plus and plus B. Why do I pick HP? Is this that? Usually when you're a tank, you're expected to take multiple hits. HP loses value when you get hit a second time, or a third time, or a fourth. So usually you want to work on your defenses so you don't want to lose those. You don't want to lose her already meager attack. So having more speed meant that when she gets attacked, she can do a double attack. You can secure more doubles when she uh, uses her steady breath. Um, atomic blade right afterwards so i highly recommend speed even though attack gives her four attack you you want to secure the ignis you really want to secure that over over doing four extra damage why is elise bigger than sakura well elise is on a horse elise automatically looks much bigger than sakura just because she's riding on a horse and then you get cavalry buffs on top of this a nice movement range a ton of attack and speed he devastates the battlefield for those that are not prepared for it. Why don't you build Guntra? Let's see. I have, I think plus attack is really good on Guntra. I think she's one of those characters that really benefits from one-shotting someone rather than attacking twice. Halloween Sakura. Mm -hmm. No come. <laughs> see which Sakura build do you recommend? I recommend plus Dev. Hey, wait, wait. Did, did you? You asked me this. What the hell is this? I, yeah, I, I recommend plus dev and minus HP because she gets a super boon and minus HP because she tanks multiple hits over and over again. And as for your build, you know, you use fear plus to further reduce the enemy damage. When you think about this like this, okay? Having a debuff like fear meant you, you actually get plus seven to both defense. You get plus seven to dev, you get plus seven to res, and you add your seals on top of it. You, all of a sudden you have a tanky healer that doesn't die and still debuff the entire enemy force so that if they decide not to attack Sakura, well, they will attack an enemy um, for less damage. So that's tanking in essence. It's like you taunt it somewhat that, you know, they focus on Sakura, but, you know, if they don't want to attack Sakura, well, they have to attack someone else for less damage and uh, maybe even die from doing so. 
that's how you manipulate the AI, by the way. Because when the AI feels that they will die, and they can't kill the opponent, and then they will die, they will target something else that, they, that can't kill them instead. Like Dr. Sakura, because she's not built for damage, she's a tank. That's how you play with the AI, that's how you quote-unquote taunt in this game. Let's see, ooh, why is Jenny the best healer ever? Mm, Jenny is really good, but I wouldn't say she's the best healer ever. I really like her a lot though, she's got so much attack. That attack is absolutely essential for her Savage Vantage build. The thing will take someone completely by surprise. So, you know, a lot of times I realize when I go to Arena, do you ever see like, um, what's called? Heart, hardy bearing? Maybe you'll see like once or twice, but most people, they generally don't run hardy bearings because hardy bearing is like, <laughs> use it to counter one move. It's like running white hole to counter dark hole in Yu-Gi-Oh. You don't do that. It, you have, well, most of the time you end up with a dead card in your hand. That's so, a great example. That's how, yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Yu-Gi-Oh was my favorite game for a while. So, you, you waste a slot for nothing, and you also have to think about how you have to use your um, use your coins to get it to, to uh, level 3. So there's a lot of opportunity cost that comes with using hardy bearings. That's why, despite the fact that, you know, it it's handy when it's there, nobody runs it. There's so much opportunity cost when it comes to running hardy bearing that you should, should maybe consider having it, like, uh, as a... I don't know, like like something that comes with another effect. Something that'll make it so that people actually run the skill. Just having the, its effect by itself is not enough. That's the problem with Hardy Bearings and why I feel that um, you can run Vantage and you will ruin everybody's day. It's kind of why I guess I kind of say that Jenny's the best healer ever when I did the video. It really will catch someone by surprise if they're not prepared for it. Hold on, let me get my Jenny Vantage. <laughs> <laughs> right now, this second. <laughs> I am inspired. Alright, so let's see. Let's see. What about Nino? Oh, Nino, I have already a setup for her, for the Dark Emperor, that I will bring up later when I when I actually have enough feathers. Feathers is such a commodity for me right now. So, I, it's not enough. I just never have enough feathers. It's kind of funny, I'm a whale and all that stuff. I spend a lot of money on the game. Here I am struggling with feathers. Don't, you don't want to summon just to get feathers, by the way. That is so inefficient. You spend thousands of dollars for nothing. If they ever offer like some kind of, they kind of offer a package with Burger King that comes with feathers. But if they allow you to buy feathers straight up, God, dude, I'm gonna be so over that. You, all of a sudden, you'll see a whole bunch of ridiculous unit that used to be plus uh, three stars or four stars. All of a sudden, like five stars. You see, like, for example, Sarah Moon running around. That's how I would build Sarah. I'll turn her into Sarah Moon. You know what she's gonna do? She's gonna grab that stupid candle light. She'll be like, I'll smite you in the name of the moon. You can't attack back. And then the six pass of pain plus will descend upon you. Then you die. You can't even retaliate. That's that's the power of the six pass of pain plus. What if they released a value meal with the healer on it? Well, it depends on the healer, really. But honestly, I, I just need the mats. That's what I needed. And, um... Or, I guess, if, if it's, um... If it's Bridal Lin, I definitely would welcome her. Her candlelight is too much. If that was the one time that I would go into Legendary Banner to go and pull a bunch of Legendary... Uh, pull a bunch of, um... A bunch of... Legendary you know, Ike. You're, you're haunted, Doctor. <laughs> you're haunted. Haunted? Why, why am I haunted? You pulled so many legendary Ikes that you're letting it slip. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it's giving me brain damage. So if you ask me if brain damage can be treated, it can. It, uh, it'll just cost you an arm and a leg, a thousand dollars, two thousand dollars, three thousand dollars, until you pull the unit that you actually want. Can't believe it. How can Seekbert? People are complaining about not getting Seekbert, and here I am with like like five and six legendary ikes and no secret i was wondering what the hell is going on my head was about to swell up and explode right there and then let's see now let's talk about thieves running through colors hell was giving you a lot of these what's your same favorite like kagero well there's there you go my favorite is kagero one she has massive boobs and two she does a lot of damage to infantry you're gonna find a lot of infantry running around you you know 
dragons is, is a thing now. You're going to see, like, dragon infantry dragons to support them. Ninjins, yeah, you could blast them in the face. They die with Kagero. But I think one of the things with thieves, though, is just that, like, for instance, Rogue Dagger. You can steal someone's dev and res, and you can also debuff them. So you can do a chunk of damage to them. And on top of that, you can tank better. Tanking is going to be really important, I think. You know, now that we're moving away from the one-shot era into another era altogether. So if they release an armor tank and you give them something like that, or like, say, Smoke Dagger. Dude, Smoke Dagger is so disgusting. Minus six to all stats. Are you serious? What the hell were they thinking when they made something like that? But that doesn't come from a character with giant boobs. Oh, no, no, it doesn't. It comes in character with Saizo, apparently, though. He has, you can... he has nice abs, though. Oh? He has a nice chest, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah he, he does. He, he, he does, indeed. Yeah, let's see what other got, questions we've got. Ryoma's definitely got some nice fan service uh, retainers. Oh yeah, Ryoma has beautiful taste. I, I like Ryoma a lot. I like him a lot. I like his his, um, his retainers a lot. He's definitely great. I mentioned this before. When I first started the game, I I, I got Ryoma, and he carried me throughout so so much of the game. You know, it, it was really a sin that I spent money on this stupid game because I could have just used Ryoma for everything. That would have been the end of it. But no, I just have to go and get Setsuna. No, you know Setsuna is so hot. She's like this maid archer thing and she can quad people Ooh, that's so exciting i better try and pull more of her and as i go down the rabbit hole and this is what happened regret these things all right let's see uh, savage vantage bill and jenny yep that's right how's dark overlord elise doing she's doing very well uh one other question monster reborn yeah dude can you imagine that oh, oopsies i have somehow turned on my stupid thing by accident but anyway Monster Reborn? Can you imagine that in Fire Emblem Heroes? Dude, usually you're worrying about people dying, but if you have Monster Reborn, you don't have to worry about that anymore. Dude, that would be so sick. You can, like, pass through all the arenas without any problems. I, I would definitely love it if, like, healers can revive people. That would be beautiful. Lights Blessings on a healer as a skill. <laughs> yes, like, <laughs> like a skill. So incredibly broken skill. Yes, yes, yes. I would absolutely love that. That would be so beautiful. Let's see, what other questions do we have? Dr. Saku's best haircut in Fire Emblem Heroes. Ooh, ooh, tough question, tough question. I say the best one is probably Ryoma. You can't quite deny his Raditz hair. He must have put a lot of effort into managing it. But then you have Elise. Like, what the hell are those things? Are these like cinnamon rolls <laughs> around their head. What are those things? What do you even call this hairstyle? But, you know, it's fabulous, and it's definitely something that she put a lot of work into. So I, I think, I think, at the end of the day, I, I think I would go to release. I mean, you see, you see Raditz before, he has that hairstyle, so Ryoma isn't exactly original. That's How right. about you answer some, huh? Been yeah. just talking this whole time. That's all right, Doctor, all right. Does anybody want to give the um the host here a little bit of a question before doctor has to go do i think something like solar blade brace could become a seal i think down the road maybe if they run out of, run out of ideas or the power creep reaches extreme levels you could probably start seeing stuff like distant ca close counter i don't know maybe sake's blessing is a seal could you imagine the game would go in a huge direction that way Especially since, oh, yeah. yeah. What do you think, Doctor? Just encounter would be. Well, actually, no, no, that that would not be right. Too. The problem with Sakai's blessing is is that it doesn't stop dragons. It, it stops pretty much everyone else, but dragons. No, oh, no, no, no. They they kind of give the finger to Lin and be like, no, no, you're you're gonna die now. There's nothing you can do. You and your <laughs> pitiful 15 defense. Yeah, I'm gonna eat you whole. I'm gonna have a delicious Lin meal. I'm gonna have Mongorian beef for dinner tonight. That's that's what the dragons are thinking when they they see this. Case blessing it has it has weaknesses, which is good. I, I prefer that. Desperation as a seal though, that might be different. Desperation as a seal might might change things a little. We could be seeing it soon though. We had quick repose. True. I didn't expect quick repose to show up as a seal. 
Quick Repulse as a seal is absolutely amazing. It allows you to run stuff like Guard on your B slot, Wrath on your B slot, and still be able to double attack afterwards. That's a very, very useful seal. In fact, it gave Hector that stupid build that lets him have All Breaker when he gets attacked. Can break everything! Can you imagine? That's so incredibly stupid. And yet, well, he can pull it off thanks to that stupid seal. Okay, so, seal yeah. For your healers? Do I use those? Yeah, oh, Bantage, definitely. Bantage oh, seal. Definitely. Mm. Oh, yeah. Then you, could, seal would be so then you can combine Wrathful, Dazzling, and Vantage. Oh, Lord. Oh, God, dude. Why do you say such horrible things? It, it's so disgusting, even I don't want to do it. Yes, you can do something <laughs> like that. You can do some really nasty things with healers down the line because of all these seals that are coming in. Seals, they're, they're giving... Okay, so we talked about how, you know, healers don't have their A slot options. They don't like anything right but now with all these seals coming in all of a sudden they can attack people in an angle that they cannot even see that is that is the essence of building a really powerful team in fire emblem heroes it's not about making your characters as buff as possible no it's about hitting someone in an angle they cannot see so if they say they have wings of mercy that would be even scarier Wings of mercy on a healer first of all makes them heal better Second, you know, you can hit them in an, in an angle they cannot see. You can pain people in an angle they cannot see. It's all about the enemy phase sometimes. Would, would you would you agree then that Niles is very good at attacking uh, enemies from the rear, from angles that they can't see? <laughs> yes, yes, Niles is an expert in doing so. Well, honestly, people don't give Niles enough credit. I, I think he's a very powerful character, even in this game. Oh, yeah, yeah, he has 25 attacks. So what? He has, like, a million resistance. And he procs the glacies thanks to all these naked, half-naked guys around. Oh, yeah, look at me and my horde of... My horde of Summer Xanders. Yeah, look at me. Your naked chest gives me strength. All of a sudden, he powers up his blast. <laughs> Summer blows his all over everyone's face. That, my friend, is Niles. You power him up, and he uses his glacies and blow everyone's face off. That is Niles. I think Niles is really underrated. His resistance is something to be feared. So, so you would agree that Summer Xander's um, ability of having a rock-hard chest and no nipples contributes to Niles' power, then? Oh, yeah, definitely. He's like his, he's, he's like his battery pack. <laughs> talk about Final Fantasy XI. Oh, my God, dude. Actually, you know what? I will talk about Final Fantasy XI it, because it kind of pertains to this. So, in Final Fantasy XI, all right, I when I first played it, it was like, dude, I wanted to be, I wanted to be blue. I want to be a guy who carries a spear and hit things repeatedly. But the problem with Final Fantasy XI is that if you don't have a party, you can't do anything well, unless you're a Beastmaster, in which case, you know, have fun playing Pokemon like your whole lifetime. But See, the problem with finding a party is, is that you need healers. Nobody wants to heal, you know? You, you, it's not exciting. But uh, when I, when I, you know, decide that I'm going to turn my Elvon, Elvon Spearman into a healer, it actually was a lot of fun for me because I control who lives and who dies. Somebody, you know, decides to pull too much aggro, I laugh at him. I don't heal him because if I do, I get aggro. So I'm just going to let him die, laugh at him, revive him, and then we try again. So... That is the privilege that you have as a healer in an MMO like that. I, I, I think he, healers are needs to be appreciated more. They're like, they're like, as a matter of fact, they're kind of like teachers. Teachers are not getting paid enough. You no, know? teachers are not getting paid enough. Yet they're doing something that is most important to society. They need you need teachers. You need people to teach people to go go about the right way. But, this this oh, wasn't yeah. scripted, by the way, and just because I'm a teacher. Don't script I, didn't, I didn't tell Lou Boo to, to say this. I haven't scripted a damn thing, all right? Everything I've been saying is just off my brain damage head. Do you think I have time to script things? I don't. I don't have the time for that. But anyway, uh, so so yeah, healers healers and teachers are very important. That's basically how, how it comes to be. You, know? you need one of those things in your party, and well, guess what? No, there's no healer. You gotta have to deal with me. That's what I feel about Final Fantasy XI. It was a very fun experience for me. So what type of free-to-play teammates would you recommend for DC or Bar? Oh, definitely a healer. <laughs> definitely a healer. <laughs> need, you need a healer to lower the damage than Obar will take. So Sakura will be perfect for this. Yeah. Sakura and then have her heal Obaro every time she takes a hit. And then, you know, Obaro kills people with DC and double 
and quick repose with guard. Guard is very important too. With guard, you can shut down enemies who, say for instance, Aira, okay? He's absolutely disgusting. Her slaying edge and her stupid Regno Astra, she can unleash twice. Two attacks, sometimes you can even bust a blue unit. Uh, once you have guard, ooh, what are you gonna do? <laughs> Scratch me? <laughs> Scratch me, power creep girl. Yeah, get the hell out of here. He's still a goddamn shadow in my um hero hero uh, thing, by the way. My hero catalog. She's just a big old shadow because I still haven't pulled one of her. And I'm pretty proud of not contributing to that horrible banner because that banner is just a big money grab. But yeah, so that would be what I recommend to go with Obaro. Let's see, is she, she is there any other question that is very interesting that I should talk about? Maybe one more before you have to go talk to. Yeah, yeah, I think I've spent too much time here. I apologize. I'm just kind of like, I, I kind of got more into it than I thought. At first, I was like, oh man, I'm so scared. I, what am I going to do? I haven't done a stream before. Anyway, so let's see. How busted do you think a flying healer would be? Actually, you know, it, it's kind of funny. I, they're not really that busted. It's kind of like how flying Azura is not that busted, but they provide another angle to go about doing things. Carry guidance on them. And the fact that they're flying, they can get anywhere. Also, because they're a mixed type, you can give you can give them attack tactics, defense tactics, and hopefully speed tactics when that comes up. But those are very important things that you should consider when it comes to movement types. So it's not busted, but it gives you a lot a lot of fun options. I've also talked about Sarah before, so I just on candle light or something stupid on her. I you can ask me this on my videos or something like that. I can explain more in detail. And I uh, what about guard three on boy? I think guard three on boy is fine, especially with quick repose. Anyway, I I mean I guess that's it. Do you have anything else you want to tell me? No, not at all, Doctor. And thank you so much for your time being here. And maybe one day we'll we'll visit you again, right? Okay, that sounds like a plan. Maybe we can talk with someone else like. Big Dire Thunder, I always want to hear his opinion of things. He seems like the type of guy who, who likes to get in deep with the mechanics of the game. I mean, I figured you as well. So we can have, all have a little little chat together. It would be kind of cute. I completely agree then, Lubu. Yeah, yeah. AKA do it over tea. We can definitely do everything over tea. Do we invite Soleil though? Uh... Maybe? She's, <laughs> she's, she's kind of cute. Cool! That's very cool then, Dr. Sakura. Feel free to give your final words then to the chat and everyone watching, because I'm sure we'll be seeing this later as well. Oh, all right. So, really, what's most important is that you remember that every unit can be the strongest unit in the game. It's just a matter of, you know, being creative. Don't just go and listen to, like, game press for advice. Um, they, you know, they might not fit your need. You have to sometimes think on your own. Every unit in the game can be made powerful. Totally agree with you, Doctor. Thank you so much. We'll be showcasing some awesome characters inspired by your your um, your talk today. Thank you so much. Thank you. Take care. Have a good one, Doc. Bye-bye. Yep, see you again.